Okay, ich bin hier. Okay, so thank you for the introduction. Uh, this work was done with Dia uh, Kavya uh, and Dan Feldman, all from uh, Haifa University. So I think this work is interesting for uh, infinitely many number of, uh, of, of reasons, but I will point out two. One is that um, we show a useful uh, building block that can be used by other applications or other MPC applications. And the other one, it shows uh, a link between core sets and the secure computation, which, is, which are two different uh, uh, areas. So let me tell you what, uh, let me explain what I mean. Um, so many algorithms follow more or less these lines. They have uh, n input something, let's call it dA1 to dn. And we want to find a subset of these somethings by a filter given by the user, some, and maybe by, by query, and then we want to report the, the, the something that we, that we found. Uh, so for example, the, the input can be the list of all children in the world, and we want to report all those who were good this year. Or the input can be all your email in your email box, and we want to report all the emails that are not spam. Uh, or the input can be all the uh, restaurants in the world, and we want to report all the bigger restaurants that are less than one mile away from you. Uh, so in this talk, we are going to assume that, uh, the is, that, that, that there is some is match functionality that can tell us if an input item is, is relevant or not, should be reported or not. We are going to assume that uh, an is match function exists. Uh, it gets two parameters, uh, di, the input item, and uh, q, the, the query, and it returns xi, a binary, either, either uh, one if the input item should be reported or zero if it should not be reported. We are going to assume this exists. We are not going to uh, uh, consider this in our talk. Instead, we are going to, to, uh, to focus on the, other on the last step, how to report this item uh, efficiently and efficiently, of course, with respect to communication. We don't want to report the entire database. Uh, so let us consider a slightly uh, uh, easier um, problem. Uh, instead of reporting the, the input item, we're going to report the indices of, uh, of the items that have passed the filter. Uh, so two notes. One, um, once we have solved the easier question, um, solving the other question is easy, it can extend it can, it can be extended easily. We are not going to discuss how it can be extended. The details are in the, um, in the paper. Uh, and the second uh, note is that the problem becomes not interesting if there are too many indices to report. Because if there are almost n indices to report, then just report, you can just report everything with the same asymptotically uh, uh, time. Uh, so we're going to assume that there are at most s uh, indices to report, uh, and S is going to be significantly smaller than N. Ideally, we would like the communication complexity to be a function of S. Uh, so, spoiler alert, it's going to be a function of S and uh, log N. We can't escape the log N. So, as the title suggested, we are going to uh, use homomorphic encryption. So, we're going to, to uh, to show how, alg how our algorithm lives in a, in a homomorphically encrypted uh, uh, scenario. Uh, we, are not going to <coughs> we are not going to uh, discuss how homomorphic encryption uh, uh, works, what is the internal. We are going to treat homomorphic encryption as a black box. Um, so still just some notations and quick uh, overview of what homomorphic encryption is. 
So it's a public key and encryption scheme. So that means that we have uh, uh, an encryption function that given a message X, we can encrypt it and get a ciphertext of X. The ciphertext we denote with, with X in brackets. Um, and we have a function called decrypt that gets a ciphertext and returns the, the message inside. In homomorphic encryption, in fully homomorphic encryption, we have two more functions. We have add that gets X and Y and returns a ciphertext such that when we decrypt it, we get X plus Y. And the function mul that uh, gets two ciphertext as X and Y and returns a ciphertext that when decrypted gives us X times Y. So just for short notation, we are going to denote X in brackets plus Y in brackets. That is going to mean calling the add function with X and Y, the ciphertext X and Y. And X in brackets plus Y, not in brackets, that is going to mean encoding or encrypting Y and then calling add with X, the ciphertext, and the ciphertext of Y. Uh, similarly, we have mul, so X in brackets times uh, Y in brackets is going to mean calling the multiply function with X and Y. And X in brackets times Y not in brackets, well, that is not a multiplication, actually, because we can treat it as x plus x plus x, y times. So this, this is basically uh, an addition or addition operation. So as you can uh, clearly see, with uh, addition and multiplication, we can actually evaluate any polynomial uh, on, on ciphertext. And we already know that every algorithm can be implemented, uh, can be expressed as a polynomial of its, uh, of its input. So that leads to an easy conclusion that any algorithm can be evaluated using FHE. Uh, the only problem is that the efficiency, the, the, the running time, deteriorates as the degree of the polynomial gets um, uh, higher. So uh, we want to keep the degree of the polynomial as small as possible. So that's just brief over our results uh, before we uh, explain how we did it. So the direct approach, what was previously known on how to report uh, um, uh, a sparse vector was uh, uh, a degree of proportional to D times N, where we reduce the, the degree of the polynomial to D. Uh, here D is the degree of, uh, of the is match functionality. So we have to have D, we cannot escape D if we want to, uh, to, to apply the is match uh, functionality. Um, in our solution, the communication complexity is a little worse, uh, S square times log square N as opposed to S log N, and the client needs to work a little bit harder to, uh, to decode the, the output. So let's have, a, let's have an example in mind. Suppose that Dunkin' Donuts uh, wants to have a service where um, you give them uh, your location and they report to you what are the uh, restaurants, the Dunkin' Donuts restaurants that are less than one mile away from you. But of course, we want to keep our privacy, so we don't want to tell Dunkin' Donuts where we are, but we still want to know where the uh, uh, nearest or, or where the near restaurants are. Uh, obviously, downloading the entire Dunkin' Donuts database is, uh, is not feasible, especially not when you are in another country and data is very expensive. Uh, so here in this example, the input is going to be the location of all the uh, Dunkin' Donuts restaurants in the world, uh, that is going to be D1 to, B, to Dn. Each Di is the location given as a pair of GPS coordinates. We, are also having, we, are, we will also have a query, the, which is our location, encrypted. So Dunkin' Donuts do not know, does not know where, our, where we are, what is our location. It, it's kept encrypted during the entire uh, protocol. Um, the is match function in this case is going to compute the distance between uh, um, a GPS coordinate of a Dunkin' Donuts restaurant and our location. And of course, this, this computation is done homomorphically. The distance is computed homomorphically. And then it is compared to one mile, again homomorphically, which gives us uh, a binary value, xy, xi, sorry, uh, such that xi equals one if the i restaurant is, small, is closer than one mile to where we are, zero otherwise. And we are left with the, with the problem of reporting all the i's such that xi equals one. So clearly in this uh, example, n is very large. So I checked yesterday, Dunkin' Donuts have a gazillion restaurants. And uh, 
But still, in a radius of one mile, there are not too many restaurants. There are no more than, I don't know, 10 restaurants, I guess. So, um, so here the input is going to be a binary x1 to xn, after we have applied these match. Then, and we know that there are at most s ones. So the output is going to be at s numbers, um, s, uh, let's say, a vector of, uh, of dimension s. Uh, where the first slot in the vector is going to indicate the index of the first one in, in xi, the second slot is going to indicate the index of the second one, et cetera, et cetera. Each of these slots is going to be given by a different polynomial. So this is the direct approach, what was known before, uh, before our work. So let's see what is such a polynomial for the tth uh, slot in the, in, the, in the output vector. So it's not super important to understand why this is the polynomial. Um, for completeness, I will just breeze over it, um, but it's not super important. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a sum for j goes from one to n, multiplying j by uh, xj by is equal, where is equal a and b is actually an, uh, an equality test. It returns one if a equals one, and if a equals b, sorry, and zero otherwise. So the last term in, the, in this product, the is equal, actually tests if there are t minus one occurrences of one in, in x1 to xj minus one. And if xj is also one, then that means that j is the index of the t um, uh, occurrence of one in the vector. So actually this sum actually uh, uh, deter uh, is eliminated into uh, j star, where j star is the occurrence of the jth one. So how is equal uh, implemented? It can be implemented, uh, implemented for example, using Fermat's little theorem. So is equal a b is one minus a minus b to the power of t minus one. So this leads to, and since t is more than n, it leads to a degree that it is, that, that is at least n. So we are going to borrow a concept from computational geometry, which is corset. So corset is, uh, we say C is a corset of P, if C has a shorter representation than, than P. And you can get P from C by decoding uh, C in, in an efficient way. And what we are going to do, we're going to uh, compute a corset of X1 to Xn. The corset is going to be computed homomorphically, so uh, it is going to be a, a, a ciphertext, an encrypted corset. We are going to send this encrypted corset to the user. The user is going to decrypt it with his uh, secret key, um, and then decode the corset to get back the x1 to the xn. So the corset we are going to use is uh, a, a sketch by Indik, Nego, and Rudra. Uh, they showed that uh, uh, there is a sketch matrix, uh, a, an SN sketch matrix that, that can transform a long vector, an n-dimensional vector, into a shorter vector, a k-dimensional vector. We'll, we will say what k is in a minute. Uh, such, that, um, su such that x, the original vector, can be uh, decoded from y, the sketch, the, the, the sketch multiplied, so the sketch is y, the s multiplied by x, and we can get x back from y by some decoding uh, algorithm. Uh, so here's, here is an example of, um, of a one seven sketch matrix. You, you can see that uh, each column here decodes the binary representation of the, of the index of the column. And why is this a one seven sketch matrix? Because if we multiply it by a seven dimensional vector that has at most one occurrence of one, then all the columns are going to be eliminated and the only column that is going to survive is the column that is multiplied by the, by the one of the vector. And that, was, that will give us a three-dimensional ve vector that encodes the index of the, of the one in the seven-dimensional vector. The decoding here is easy, just pass the binary representation into a number. So Indik, Nego, and Rudra extended this, extended this idea and they showed that for any S and n, there exists an Sn sketch matrix of size k times n, uh, where k equals uh, an order of s square log n, and the decoding time is polynomial uh, in k. 
So just to wrap it up, what, what our approach is, we have the X vector, which is the result of the applying the ease match functionality. We are going to multiply it by a sketch matrix X. We're going to get a corset, an encrypted corset. We're going to send the corset, the encrypted corset to the user. The user is going to decrypt and decode and thus know what are the indices of the, of the restaurants that are near him or her. Uh, so what is the degree analysis? So since we, are, we multiply X, uh, an encrypted vector by S, uh, uh, a matrix, a sketch matrix that is in clear text, then the degree of our polynomial is actually one. This is actually a linear, uh, linear polynomial. And that means that for this step of, of, of the bigger algorithm, uh, for this step we can even do with additive homomorphic encryption. Uh, so we implemented our, uh, uh, our uh, algorithm and compared it to the direct approach. So not surprisingly, our algorithm is linear. Uh, our, our algorithm is given by the blue line and the direct approach is given by the red line. Our algorithm is linear while the direct approach is not linear. Still, we are slower than the direct approach for, uh, for small vectors. That's that is because of the, uh, the overhead produced by the sketch. Um, so to conclude, we saw that we can use core sets to improve performance of uh, MPC, uh, multi-party computation protocols, and FHE in general, in, in more specifically. Uh, we saw that uh, we can report an S sparse vector of size N uh, using only additive uh, homomorphic encryption. And I would like to see more applications using core sets to, to, to improve uh, MPC or other protocols. And specifically for this application, we want to improve the constant uh, that is already work in progress. We, can, we suspect that we can improve the, the constant by using a better sketch or by, and by um, uh, having a tighter analysis of, of the algorithm. Thank you. Any question for Saul? Hi. Uh, so uh, since you use the HL lib, I wonder is the open source library you have uh, available sometime? I, I couldn't find it. Uh, yes, you, you can email us. We'll send it to you. Uh, okay. It's not on GitHub yet, but uh, we are going to. We are planning to release. Okay. Also about the security parameters you are using in the HLib. lib. So, uh, yeah, so we paper? chose uh, the security par parameter to be uh, 80, which is a uh, standard of this. Uh, so about the, the homomorphic parameters, like the ring degree, the modulus size, the are, are those in the, like a full paper? Yeah, okay, you, you, can, you can see the all, all the details in the full paper. Um, yeah, so when you compare Okay, so, so the modulus size should be, that depends. So, so for example, for the direct approach, the modulus size should be at least n because you are, you, you are generating number that, that might be n. So you have to use a uh, modulus size at least n. Uh, for our case, uh, the modulus size should be at least s because the number that are generated are, 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 are of n. So the modulus size is smaller. Yeah, we, we can talk that in details later. What? Uh, we can talk about it like in details later, like about yes, parameters. Yes, uh, it's, it's more than cold. Sure, thank you. For a few seconds, yeah. Are there questions for Saul? I do have one quick question. When we're speaking about uh, more application, or do you have already the next application in mind, or is it just a generic more application? Um, so we are very, we are, we are fans of uh, core sets. We think that core sets should be, should be everywhere. <laughs> um, we, we, we do have uh, some ideas, but nothing concrete that I can speak of right now. Okay. There are no more questions. Let's thank Saul and all the speakers of the session. <laughs> this will be the session.